Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 558, written by KSN Chusnan. I crash my snowmobile into another universe. In February 2020, I was snowmobiling for the first time. My boyfriend at the time was driving all day and finally let me drive at the end of the trip. We had been dating for two months and this was our first trip together. I'm going around the last bend and I accidentally floor the snowmobile instead of pushing the brake. I go flying off a cliff and end up 50 feet down. The snowmobile is on top of me, upside down, still running with the bottom part spinning. My helmet has flown off and my head is one inch from a tree. I'm terrified. My boyfriend managed to roll off the back at the last minute and is trying to save me, but the snow is really deep and he's having a hard time getting down the steep cliff. My legs are fully submerged in snow with the snowmobile on top and I'm not sure if I'm paralyzed. He calls for help and all these men run down to save me. When they finally pull me out, I can stand and it's the happiest moment of my life. I'm not paralyzed. I don't have so much as a scratch on me. Do I have a concussion? Maybe, it's hard to say. The snowmobile also miraculously has minimal damage, only the little plastic windshield part is cracked. In hindsight, this moment is where everything changed for me. But you have to understand, I didn't piece this together and come to this realization until months later. These are the differences in my life. There was suddenly a pandemic. Everything was shut down within a few days. In my old timeline, there was a virus going around, but it had only impacted a few people and was similar to the flu, nothing concerning. I had a different job. At the time, I chalked it up to the pandemic. We were on the trip because I was about to start a new job. I had signed the contract and I knew what the role entailed. I was going to start the Monday after, but after the crash, I couldn't get a hold of my new boss for nine months and he finally told me I got the job in November even though I had accepted it in February. He also comments how I've never been into the office, when in fact he gave me a tour in January of 2020, and we spent the day together. The role I'm in is completely different than the papers I signed. My loving, awesome boyfriend was now physically abusive for the first time that night. He blacked out and attacked me, choking me. He was crying the next day, and nothing like this has ever happened before. I thought he was traumatized from the crash and let it go. That was another thing that was different. I would have never let that go before. I come from a loving childhood where my dad was my best friend always. I would have never put up with that before the crash and was shocked that I did. In the old timeline, I was on a low dose of Effexor, Xanax, and blood pressure medication. I don't take any medication at all in this timeline. Over the next year, a series of weird things that don't make any sense keep happening to the point I start to feel suspicious. I suddenly have an incurable disease I didn't have before. I'm in pictures I have no idea what the context is. I'm wearing clothes I don't own anymore. My friends have memories of me I don't share and I'm getting more and more depressed. The boyfriend keeps physically abusing me and I can't get out of it. It's as if my own will evaporated away. I just keep thinking. This can't be my life. This isn't my life. It just felt like I wasn't supposed to be here. And I finally look at Reddit and realize that I died in the snowmobile crash and that this is an alternate universe I'm in. I start to just agree with friends when they say, remember when you said this and that? And we went here and did this. But in truth, I have no recollection. Also, my CAT scans are normal at this point after visiting the ER. To be honest, I wasn't the most observant person to begin with. A new couch could be in the living room for days and I wouldn't notice. So when all the stores and shops are different in one area of town, I don't know if that was always there or new. I finally worked up the nerve to tell my sister, who is surprisingly supportive. She asked what else is different. There was this song in the other timeline. It was a very popular song by a Shania Twain or Sheryl Crow type. Anyone would know it. I sing it to her with the lyrics and tell her we always used to listen to it growing up. She has no recollection of it. I type the words into Google. The song doesn't exist here. 
The longer I'm in this timeline, the more I forget the words and melody of the old song. Also, there was no iPhone 13 in the other timeline because Steve Jobs was superstitious and it was supposed to go from iPhone 12 to iPhone 14. I notice little glitches like that, that are stupid and don't really matter. How do I feel about it now? I have accepted my new reality. I feel bad for my sister and parents in the old timeline that they're dealing with my death in a freak snowmobile accident, but there's nothing I can do. Trying to find them again would be like trying to walk from Canada to Australia with no map, impossible, and a waste of time, and also a drowning. I'm just making my reality the best I can now. It clearly, for some reason, wasn't my time to die. I mean to the point of going to the afterlife, if there is one, so I should do something important if I can. I was always agnostic before this, but didn't believe in different timelines. I thought movies like The Butterfly Effect and Run Lolo Run were dumb concepts. Now I don't rule anything out, ever. About my iPhone. Jobs died in 2011 in the old timeline as well, but he had planned out the designs for the phones way past when he died, because he knew he had cancer. He had an elaborate release plan of the phones in the future. Did he not hear? And yes, he designed them so that the iPhone 13 would be skipped because he was superstitious. Have I been to therapy? Yes, I've been to multiple therapists, psychiatrists, counselors. I can't find any evidence of the effects or prescription I had, and I don't know who would have prescribed it. The bottles were just gone. I don't rule out that I bumped my head, and some bad crap happened to the world after that. This is just my theory. I see a lot of people saying, I want to believe you, but… I mean really, that's your choice. It doesn't impact me either way. I just wanted to share my story. Case Notes, file number 558. A few interesting points here regarding your quantum immortality experience. The first is how you feel as if you yourself have changed. I have never heard of this happening, but it would make some sense. One common question I've had posed to me is, what happens to the consciousness that is taken over when we die in one universe and our sentience is transposed into another us in a different universe? Presumably the us in that new universe was already occupied. So do we erase the consciousness already there? Personally, I think it's nothing so dark. I think an automatic blending occurs. Your personality then changed precisely because you merged with the one that was the you in this universe. I think this isn't reported on often because most people jump into a universe very nearly identical to their past one, with usually just minimal cosmetic changes like their loved one having a different haircut or something like that. But you, this new universe is radically different a pandemic, a different job, your boyfriend is abusive, etc. So the you in this universe was significantly different from the you in the first universe. Thus, the blending had more notable effects, such as you tolerating things you would never have tolerated before. I still believe in free will though, so while your personality may be influenced, you can still focus hard to make the choices you want to make. I think you'll be okay. Case file number 559, written by Broxy Lossky Tuxky. Do you want a ride from an alien? So about two years ago, I would walk to and from high school. I only live around four blocks away, so it was a brisk walk to and from. I live in a safe neighborhood in the middle of a desirable school district. I know all of my neighbors, even the ones down the block, and recognize everyone on my walk to and from. That's why this shook me up so much. I was walking back home from school one afternoon when a yellow car pulled up just a few feet behind me. I didn't think anything of it and kept walking, yet they honked at me. I turned around and looked at the car and I vaguely recognized the people inside. There was a driver and two kids my age in the back. The driver looked similar to my homeroom teacher and the two kids looked similar to two twins who are in my grade. I felt as if something was telling me to keep walking and ignore them. But like a horror movie protagonist, curiosity got the best of me and I walked over to the car. When I got closer, I noticed details about the people in the car that seemed off. For one, they looked eerily similar to the people I knew from school, yet each one had a few details that made them unrecognizable. It felt like the uncanny valley effect. I can't really explain it well unless you know the people in person, but it was like someone had a police sketch of them made, ultra-realistic if that makes sense. 
When I got to the passenger window, the woman said, Do you know these two from school? And I just said, Um, yeah, I think so. And she nodded and asked if I needed a ride home. I told her my dad would pick me up a block down from here. She asked if I needed a ride down the block and I told her I would be fine. I felt the worst kind of vomit-inducing dread when the woman talked to me, and it didn't help me that the two girls were dead silent in the back the entire conversation. She told me to have a good day, and as I walked away, she honked at me again. I whipped my head around, completely freaked out, and she just smiled and waved at me. I booked it home after that, locked my doors, and waited for my dad and sisters to get home. When they did, I told them what happened. My dad was nonchalant about it, telling me to not walk up to cars next time. My sister, on the other hand, was super freaked out, and even now doesn't want me to bring it up. My friends think that I met some weird doppelgangers, and I kind of agree. Two years later, and I can still remember this, it just weirds me out.